So next, next we're going to go to the gentleman from Hawaii, Mr. Case. Good to see you. Moving right across the country, Chair Pallone, Ranking Member Walden, members, thank you so much for allowing me to share my, cons my thoughts on some issues of concern to uh, Hawaii and to our country, I believe. I'd like to focus today on what I believe are needed changes to the 1996 Communications Decency Act that are unintentionally preventing my state and its counties, as well as many others throughout our country, from enforcing our planning and zoning laws and implementing overall public policy in affordable housing, community safety, and other critical areas. The internet has brought much progress to our world, and Section 230 of the uh, Communications Decency Act, which provides internet platforms with some broad immunity from liability th for third-party content posted on their sites, has been a part of that. Um, but today's massive internet platforms that offer services cannot be allowed to knowingly facilitate lawbreaking in our states and localities by hiding behind CDA 230 immunity. Congress first saw and addressed the modern misuse of CDA 230 last year when we passed the Allow States and Victims to Fight Online Sex Trafficking Act, FOSTA, legislation, which imposed accountability for internet platforms that were profiting from human trafficking. In a parallel situation, though, this issue is also especially acute with respect to platforms that advertise and sell illegal short-term vacation rentals like Airbnb, TripAdvisor, HomeAway, VRBO, or Flipkey. In this area, the online host platforms claim that CDA 230 prohibits states and counties from prohibiting and regulating such rentals and from penalizing platforms that knowingly sell them illegally. By one account, my own state of Hawaii alone hosts now approximately 23,000 short-term vacation rental units, and that was 2017, meaning one out of every 24 of our housing units was a short-term rental. That was widely considered to be low then and has only grown since, driven largely by the ease of advertising and reserving these units online. The vast majority of these units are illegal, since we know that legal permitted short-term vacation rentals are in the low thousands. The negative consequences of this unregulated disruption of our housing market impact all segments of our society. First, any time we knowingly and practice uh, widespread lawbreaking, that has its own broader consequences. Second, these un units operate as the functional equivalent of hotels and yet do not pay hotel required taxes and fees and do not comply with labor, workplace safety, or consumer laws. Third, these units turn residential neighborhoods into the functional equivalent of hotel zones with the loss of those neighborhoods and the community sense. And fourth, and possibly more, most important from my perspective, they completely distort our already sky-high housing market, which in Hawaii is one of the highest in the country, but this happens in any jurisdiction with, where this issue is prevalent. And because these residential dwellings are effectively converted to hotel rooms, the available owner and resident renter markets are compressed, leading to substantially higher rents and home prices that crowd out still more local residents in what is already one of the highest rent and lowest home ownership areas of our country. There should be a way to compel short-term rental platforms to remove these illegal units from their inventory. And yet CDA 230 serves as a roadblock to that effort. In particular, the platforms have frequently asserted that CDA 230 does not allow full implementation of enfor and enforcement of these initiatives. They have sued cities such as San Francisco, Boston, Santa Monica, New York, and Miami Beach, and possibly others, claiming that CDA 230 preempts local regulatory efforts to take down illegal listings. Although the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit upheld a lower court ruling in the Santa Monica case recently that found that the short-term rental companies did not have a valid claim under 230, the assertion still chills the remedy. This pattern has repeated itself throughout our country as states and counties have continued to pursue a number of initiatives to prevent illegal rentals while attempting to withstand legal challenges from the online platforms. State of Hawaii, for example, passed legislation in 2016 which would require operators posting on rental platforms to list their legal tax identification number and platforms not to host advertising which does not contain such numbers. The city and county has followed suit in trying to regulate these, these illegal rentals recently. And in that new ordinance, which was just enacted about two weeks ago, 
was a prohibition on the platforms facilitating short-term rentals for units that are not properly registered, permitted, or otherwise allowed. I strongly disagree that CDA 230, either in language or, language or intent, can be used as a legal shield against these types of common sense regulations. And I cannot accept that in any event that federal law does not allow states and cities to adopt and implement reasonable planning and zoning laws and instead to accept the broad neg negative social consequences of non-enforcement of illegal rentals, especially when those platforms know full well that their business model relies largely on knowing breaches of the law by their operators and advertisers. My request to this committee is to formally examine this and other abuses of CDA 230. We can follow the FOSTA legislation, with, which gives us a roadmap, and I hope to work closely with you on this undertaking. Thank you very much. Thank you, and, and we will certainly uh, look into it. You know, I represent the Jersey Shore, so, you know, when we talk about rentals and tourism economy. And, and I guess it's an opportunity for me to say right now that I know the members are here today for this members' hearing, but, you know, don't hesitate personally with me or, or the rest of us or with your staff to contact us as a follow-up today. It's not like, you know, you're just here and we disappear, all right? We, we want you to understand that. Appreciate Thank that you. very much. We'll be taking you up on that kind All offer. Right. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Ed.